You okay? All right. Are we ready to go, Whitney? Yeah, go for it. Can you say something? I my volume was turned in. Yep, you'll go for it. We're ready. I think I had my speaker turned down. Okay, uh, happy Friday, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, this will be a pretty standard uh, presentation of our surveillance report. And then we'll um, open it up to questions as we always do. Let me share my screen and make sure that my uh, audio is still working after I do that. You'll see that okay? Okay. So what you're seeing here is our surveillance report as we show you every week. Um, you're continuing to see, um, you know, overall um, compared to where we were at that moment in, in kind of early mid uh, November leading into Thanksgiving week, um, we're, we're continuing to see a lower number of cases um, our seven day rolling average of cases per 100,000 was at 60, just under 64 per 100,000 for, for December, uh, the, the, the December 10th period. Um, that's a, uh, a, a still a decrease from where we were the week before that. That's promising. Um, there's, there's some things that you, we want to make sure that we're, we're cognizant of there. Um, you know, number one, we saw a pretty dramatic drop in cases uh, around Thanksgiving, as you can see there. Um, that's really related to um, likely just not, there wasn't a lot of testing going on. People were staying home, labs weren't running, um, people were taking a break, and that's a good thing. I think we all needed that. Um, the other thing that we were sort of seeing now as this sort of shakes out is that the end of the fall term at MSU was par is partly a reason for our lower numbers. You can kind of look at that. You can look at this report and kind of see that. Um, as you look at the MSU numbers l later on in the, re in the report, you'll see that, um, well, I'll just show you. So if you look at, if you just scroll down to MSU here, um, during those three weeks prior to Thanksgiving, uh, we were averaging about 226 cases a week. Um, 226, 227 cases a week associated with MSU. Um, and then during the two weeks um, after Thanksgiving, that number really dropped down to about 40 cases per week. That's a difference of about 185, 186 cases per week or roughly 27 cases per day. You know, so overall, we're seeing fewer overall cases, but if you, if you add, if you add in the the, the, the cases that we would normally expect to be seeing from MSU, you know, if, if MSU were in session and still operating kind of in the same way that it was uh, prior to the break, you would, you would think that we would probably have uh, closer to 100 cases uh, a, a day in raw numbers, not in per 100,000. Um, so that that's not, doesn't explain all of it, but it explains some of the, some of the decrease. Um, but it's it's true we're seeing we're seeing some um, um, we're seeing overall number of cases, but it's also true we're seeing uh, continuing to see high rates of transmission in the community. We need to be real about that. But I also want to acknowledge that part of the reason for this drop maybe and, and likely is due to how the community is responding to this challenge. Uh, people are wearing face coverings. Um, the Board of Health rules intended to prevent transmission. In crowded settings, people, most people are taking those pretty seriously and those seem to be uh, also having an impact. As we've said many times, this is going to be a combination of factors. It's not going to be one thing uh, that, that drives down cases and prevents hospitalizations and deaths. Um, so, you know, I want to also be cognizant of the fact that yesterday we reported uh, five additional deaths. We continue to have somewhere between 16 and 24 people in the hospital, and a significant number of those folks tend to be, are in are still in critical care. Uh, we're still seeing people who are passing away, unfortunately, from this. So it's still it still continues to be a pretty serious issue. 
The other thing I would point out is nationally, you know, we're part of the state, we're part of the national uh, setting. Nationally, things are pretty bad right now. Nationally, we're seeing um, case numbers that are, are, are kind of off the charts um, that, compared to what we've ever seen. And we're seeing the number of deaths succeed uh, 3,000 people a day on some days and averaging over 2,000. Um, that's, that's, really, that's really concerning this time of year and it doesn't probably doesn't bode well for what what the rest of December and January look like nationally and I think we should all expect uh, that will impact us in some form in Montana as well. Um, percent positive uh, came, has come down. Um, thankfully it was pretty sky high when it was over 20 percent that is really um, that's double what you, uh, uh, the, the number where you, where you really start to become concerned that 10 percent that red line across the bottom shows that 10%. You really ideally would like it to be at 5%, but the public health experts say that once you get above 10%, you're really seeing spread in a way uh, where you wanna see more testing. And you also notice that, that that number, while it came down, it's kind of stabilized and started to edge back up. Uh, I think we got down around 12 something percent for a while. That was promising, but it's starting to edge up a little bit. Um, the, the, the reduction in uh, the overall number of the, the demand for testing, I think has had an impact, uh, a positive impact on the test turnaround. That number has come back down. The median, the median time that we're waiting um, to get uh, a test result back has come down to, back down to two days. Uh, that's a positive thing. That's what we like to see. Um, what's important to understand though, is that while we're seeing uh, a significant number and we want that we want right here that you know the, the overall the delay in days we want to see the 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 bars early on in this chart and the zero and one be the tallest and that's good that that's back that way a couple of weeks ago you remember we had the most common delay was four or five days that's good um, that means the median time can can settle in at two but what you're really seeing also is there's a significant uh, number of people um, every week who are waiting three, four, and five days. And that, that becomes concerning because it makes, it makes contact tracing harder. Uh, I know that uh, folks are working hard on, on expanding testing capacity, um, but I, I, I still think there's some concern there. We still have some concern about the overall capacity of the system and, and trying to be careful about how we, how we use it and, 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 and preserve it. Um, we're, you know the, the the drop in the number of cases um, that we're that we're getting reported has given our contact tracing um, some a little bit of a reprieve. Um, you will note though that the you know we are we are we are pretty significant number of, of cases um, are being initiated on the day after we receive them, not the day we get them, uh, as we often like. So that continues to be a challenge. But I would say. Um, we haven't certainly uh, let off on our, our capacity building. We've continued to, to, to employ those people that we've always employed. And then what I would say is I would want to acknowledge that the, that the folks who are working with us, who are MSU contact tracers, continue to work with us. And even though we have a, a significant number of fewer cases associated with MSU, we still work with them and, and MSU has been gracious enough to allow them uh, to continue to work with us on community level cases. So that helps too. Um, again, you're seeing kind of a, a consistent number of people getting sick. These are onset dates when, when we do our interviews, when people are telling us if they're symptomatic, uh, that they've started having symptoms. Um, and you can kind of see that's, that's, that really hasn't dropped off much. It, we had, um, uh, and that blue shaded area is incomplete data at this point in time. We haven't done all those interviews. Um, familiar figure, um, we're, we're continuing to see, um, you know, people in their 20s, that age group, uh, really outpacing by a, by a factor of two or three times um, a lot of the other age groups, mo all the other age groups. Um, um, you, that, that age group continues to be a concern. We're, we're, we're continuing to do um, work to uh, an outreach. Uh, communication to to those folks, um, and I don't want to just point fingers. I mean, it, we're we're seeing cases in all demographic groups, 
um, but the, the the most rapid spread continues to be people in their 20s. Uh, we're continuing to work on that. MSU, we, we peeked at this a little bit a minute ago. You're seeing, as you would expect, with the end of the fall term, the numbers the the new the numbers of new cases during the reporting period um, fell off pretty dramatically. Um, but we're still getting cases. We're still getting 30, 40 cases a, a week uh, out of MSU. Um, that's that continues to be a, 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 a something we'll we'll keep watching. And then schools. Um, also, I would throw long-term care facilities. We continue to work with a wide array of schools, schools across the county. Um, K-12 schools continue to be challenged um, with cases, uh, contact investigations, isolation and quarantine. Um, and we're gonna, we're continuing to work with those folks. Um, so that's kind of uh, where we are, oh, uh, hospital beds. So, um, yeah, you know, that, this is again this changes day to day um 80 of the critical care beds at this snapshot in time um that's about 16 beds of the 20 are 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 fully occupied a significant chunk of those are, are covid patients but we're continuing to see the hospital um, maintain capacity you know it's noteworthy that we've had you know we had five deaths to announce yesterday those were mostly late uh, the early December, um, very late in November. Um, I'm hopeful that um, we've seen a, a slight downtick in the, in the number of people hospitalized. It feels that way anyway. But I, I don't know that that's anything that we can hang our hat on and take a great deal of comfort in yet. Um, I'd like to see that sustained over time. I'd like to see those numbers come down even more before I get uh, very comfortable with it one way or the other. So that is um, sort of our surveillance report for, for this week. Uh, I'm happy to take questions. Matt, this is Kevin Trevlin with Yellowstone Public Radio. Thanks for holding the call. Yeah. I don't know if you caught the governor's press conference yesterday, but he was talking about how statewide COVID positivity and hospitalization rates are down, and he generally seemed optimistic about where Montana is with the virus. You mentioned that Gallatin County is also seeing better numbers. Despite the caveats with the MSU term ending and Thanksgiving, do you generally share that optimism about the direction things are going, or are you more worried with holidays on the way? I try to remain optimistic, but also realistic. I mean, we, I think there's reasons to, to be satisfied. I mean, I, I'm really glad that our positivity rates down under 20%. I'm really glad that we're not seeing 150 cases a day, you know, but, but we're still seeing a significant number of cases and we need to, we need people to really continue to take this seriously and continue to do those things that, that hopefully are, are helping to drive uh, the, the decrease. Other questions? Hi, uh, Nora Shelley with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle here. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit more about uh, why the positivity rate might be creeping back up, if there's any sort of um, reason that that might be behind that. You know, I don't, you know, Nora, I think one theory that we were talking about prior to the holidays is that there were a lot of people who, you know, we, we were advising people not to travel if they didn't have to, but we knew that there were some people who were going to be traveling. One possibility is that that positivity rate came down in part because we had more people who were asymptomatic who were seeking a test because they wanted either validation um, for their families or they just wanted to be sure that they weren't taking it with them when they when they went into the those settings. And so you had a higher number of people who were going in for testing and then that's sort of abated. So you, you might have a, a bit of a bump up. Part of it might also be that people are taking it more seriously. Um, they're, they're taking, they're taking um, precautions to prevent themselves from, from catching the disease. And so we're truly seeing somewhat of a reduction in, in, in overall transmission in the community. It's probably a combination of those things. Um, and I would just point out that while we're, we're, we're less than where we were, but we were sky high. When you're over 20%, you're in pretty, you're in pretty tough territory. And so while we're, we're down from that, we're still over 10%. And that really is the threshold that public health experts tell us that we need to be concerned about. Other questions? Hi, Matt. Victor Flores with the Billings Gazette. 
Um, I was just curious, wanted to know a little bit more about this fall or the, the winter sports plan. Um, what kind of your advice and guidance? And, um, I believe you, um, the, the county is in charge of the, uh, the attendance restrictions and things like that, right? Yeah, I mean, I, our, my advice to the local school districts is going to remain um, to, to be very cautious, um, to, to really make sure that they're doing what they can to limit, um, to limit um, spread by limiting uh, the number of, of, of people who are, who are watching those, the, the size of those crowds. And, you know, we're, we're also working with uh, the Montana High School Association. I think that there is some uh, discussion and I think some superintendents have asked them to delay um, the beginning of some of those uh, spring uh, sporting events. And I think a lot of health officers, including myself, Think that would be a wise thing. We have some we have some time to play with here, uh, heading into spring, heading into summer. Uh, I think rushing into those those um, those winter sports um, could cause problems and, and could cause spread. We have seen significant spread related to sports sports teams, volleyball teams, um, those those are the kinds of things about in, in those athletic settings, both at the college and and the high school level. So I, I would continue to, to advise uh, pretty extreme caution. We want to give uh, kids the ability to, to compete and we want to give their parents the ability to watch them compete, but we really need to be smart about how we do that and when we do that. Other questions? Hi, Matt. This is uh, Paul Schwedelson from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Um, I know this is, you know, probably really broad and you could write a book about this, I guess. But when you think back to, to March, um, how would you just describe, you know, the, the county's response from then to now? How do you think you would characterize it? Long, that would be the first thing. It seems like this has been, um, I, I would say I continue to be, I mean, this this week has been um, another reminder of the fact that, you know, we at the health department are only a part of this response, and we um, have the support of people from across the community, and that's really kind of come through in a number of different ways. At the beginning of the pandemic, you were you recall Gallatin County was really kind of the focus in a lot of ways of spread in the state of Montana. We had more cases we were seeing uh, higher rates of community spread um, during that period of time. Um, and at that point in time, I said, you know, we have a lot of things that factor into that. We are a university town, we're a tourist town, we have a, a pretty diverse economy that brings people here. All those things are challenges for Gallatin County, but all those things also are enormous assets for the county. Um, and so we have to make sure that while we're addressing those challenges, we're also using those assets and we're using those assets. And that's, that continues to be a theme that's run through this. As we now move to the end of the year and we're facing this other challenge, which is distribution of vaccine, um, those assets continue to be a huge, huge resource for us. Um, I was able this week to hand off my incident command duties um, and so I could focus more on health officer related stuff on the uh, working with our community leaders doing those sorts of things and able to, to connect with uh, Deputy Chief Multiverne from the from the um, Bozeman uh, Fire Department, uh, Patrick Lonergan at the uh, Department of Emergency Services uh, to really help us plan for that vaccine distribution in a way that we can do it and be safe about it uh, but we also want to be um, um, uh, timely. We want to do it as quickly as we can. Uh, and we also want to be as transparent. And that's going to really take a team effort. The, the crew that has been working for the last nine or 10 months at the health department, um, they've, been running, they've been running in the red for quite some time. Um, we've been doing contact tracing, and we're going to have to keep doing that. And so those are some of the same people that are going to have to be working to give the shots. And, and distribute the vaccine, but to have that community partnership, to have uh, the city of Bozeman, to have Gallatin County, to have our partners in, in fire districts and fire departments across the, across the county 
really put their hand up and say, yeah, we'd like to be part of vaccine distribution uh, to see school, school districts working together uh, to have a uh, partnership with MSU, although there's challenges with, with all of that. Um, I, that's the thing that, that comes through to me. And the other thing I think that it, it's different though. I mean, in the beginning, we, this was a new thing. There was um, a, a, a very real uh, togetherness. I think there's been more divis divisiveness. Um, I have felt that personally. We've seen, we've seen through the course of a, a pretty tough um, campaign and election that, that, that that's, that's created uh, concern and that's created challenges as well. But the vast majority of people who I, who I interact with um, are, 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 are saying thank you and they're saying, what can we do? How can we help? And that's, that really continues to be impressive about this community. Uh, it continues to be, um, I, I think, I think uh, my stars every day that I'm health officer in Gallatin County because while we have challenges, we also have a uh, great uh, a group of partners and, 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 a, and a, in a community that um, while there are, there are people who disagree, the vast majority of people are coming together and finding ways to, to, to beat the virus back. Um, and then, then my, my other question is just, I'm just wondering, um, you know, in, in 10 or 15 years, what do you think you'll remember from the last nine months? Kind of what I've been talking about. I mean, I'll remember the people that I've been working with, uh, both in my department and, and, P and other departments. Um, you know, Whitney's on this call, Mike, Mike Multiverne, Patrick Lonergan, I'll remember, um, you know, Shane Groob down in West Yellowstone, who's just solid and is there every time we need him for something. Uh, I'll remember the people that that we've been working with more than anything, and the and the sort of the bond that we've we've made together. I think this has been hard. This is this is tough, and we're not done. We've got a long way to go, but we can see a path to the end. And I think that's important. And I think when we come through this, we're going to be stronger. We're going to be a stronger community, and our systems, our health department. Um, we're going to need a little time to, to rest when we get done with this vaccine distribution. But when, when we get done with that, we're, we're going to be a stronger community and a stronger response system, I think. Thank you. But the, to answer your question directly, the thing that I'm going to take away from this are the people, the faces, the, the, the energy and the time um, that, that, that both inside my department, outside my department and the community overall um, that have really um, um, helped us get through this. Other questions? Nothing today, Mira? I hope nothing today. Okay. I'll thank everyone right. for next time. <laughs> okay. All right. So if that's if there's nothing else, I, I appreciate your time. I hope I hope you all have a good a good weekend. Stay safe out on the roads, a little slick out there, and uh, take care. <laughs>